this place right here. Um, we're on the roof of our studio, Studio 101. It's basically where we live all week and record and write and rehearse and get drunk. Ten feet tall with no sense of rhythm. Conversations blurred my vision. Watch me act out your premonition. My wrong move is your demolition. This building's an old um, blind factory that basically made curtains and blinds from like, I think from like the 1920s onwards. So it's a fair few years old. We're in the old office part of the factory and uh, it kind of, having spent a lot of time working in offices, it feels like fun. All those times you're stuck in a dead end job and you just want to like just stand up and scream or just run around the corridors or something and you can't do it. And you can do that here. It's got basically unlimited uh, studio space which is all like um, unused old offices and stuff like that, which we've converted. It's like 20,000 square feet of space to ourselves, but we only use like 10 of that for recording purposes. And the other 19,990 is used for uh, fun and games. One distraction, no excuses. Blah, 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 my apologies are useless. Tempting fruit just right for Okay, welcome to the Mexicola Lab. It's Monday evening. There's been some drinking involved. And there are casualties. There's a man down. There's a man down. Repeat, we need medical attention. really good sounding room, looks again like 1991, like some bad headache, but um, it actually sounds really good. Recording our debut album, which has basically been, in the, well, I've been in the process of writing the bulk of it over two years with Tim. Um, and then since Dell's joined, an extra four new songs have come out. We're recording it here actually in our, in our factory. We're sort of very self-contained self in here, and uh, it's great. It just means uh, we've got no disturbances, just lock ourselves away from the world, and uh, people just drive past and don't even know we're in here. Sleep me We could choose to, to do the vocals in any room in the building, really, and that goes to guitars, bass, whatever. It's just an amazing place because we've got such a variety of sounds um, and textures, really, to use and environments, so it's, it's just great. I decided it would be quite an interesting idea to see uh, how many cups of tea straight coffee we harm in the making of this album. So the nerd in me has been tallying it up. I've got an addiction to tea. I make cups of tea. And that's generally what I do. Uh, if we're not making music, I'm making cups of tea. What people tend to get wrong is you need to put the tea bag in and the sh I cannot stress this enough. You put the sugar in before the hot water. Some people make the mistake of putting it all like this and then adding the sugar. No, 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 no. Sugar in first. Tune in next week for Dell's Masterclass on making coffee.
Dell used to, uh, he, well, he, he does a spot of penis puppetry on the side. He's got this, like, really soft clay-like bulge in his pants that you can kind of shape into any, any kind of thing. Like, like for example, he does uh, a hungry bird, which is where he pulls his dick out and does that. It's something that I'm not at all ashamed of. I do it. I'll do you some now if you want. So he did a couple of shows in Birmingham as the amazing Wango. But he, uh, he wore like this, you know, Mask of Zorro thing. And just stood there with his, with his willy out. Today's a bitch, and so are you. Just in my words, that's all you do. Your talk is cheap, and so am I. Stop clinging. We like a drink every now and again. Uh, we have to really because it kind of keeps us warm at night. It's bloody freezing in here at the moment, so uh, kind of huddle around a fire in the evening. Maybe do some writing. Uh, we've all become quite quite good at cooking, really. Sort of every one of us has like a night where we kind of, you know, wine and dine each other. You know, it's very romantic. I've been cooking the pasta for about three days now. This is almost ready. And then once the food is prepared and ready for consumption, I will telegram the rest of the band who live down the other end of the corridor to uh, come and eat with me, come dine with me. Pinch the salt, it's ready. Dinner's ready. And get it while it's hot. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 I tell you. Food. A lot of care goes into this. Give it a good mix around. Now, everyone, hush. Come closer, come closer. Listen. When you hear that, it's ready. It's ready. It's ready. Voila! We're on Mexico La Path the dish. So let's go over the uh, ingredients once more. Take two uh, salad tomatoes, a stick of celery, um, two cloves of garlic, salt, pepper, oregano, aluminum, and then I sliced up some rats that we found in the bathroom. Uh, they, they're quite chewy, but you get used to them uh, when you've been in this shithole all your life. So. That's it. Join me next week when uh, cooking gets erotic. Goodbye. Yeah, that's good. It's gonna sell. That's gonna sell. I've been in pieces. I've been in pieces. Trying to find a way to make you care. Missing the points you can fall. Trying to fake a smile to get through the door. kind of epitomizes everything that the Mexico is, is about. It's got that kind of pop edge, it's got the um, bit of ballsiness in it. It's got the riff, it's got a huge chorus, um, it's got tempo, drive, you know, it's, and lyrically it's quite dark. Right from experience, um, with a battle good. I mean, I, songs are very personal when you're writing from experience. So I try to write them to um, cater for how everyone would feel in the situations I've been in.